Let's Get To presents the McIntyre Mule, the Scott McIntyre baseball experience. So we are back here with the very first edition of the McIntyre Mule, and this might be our most straight and normal conversation that we're going to have on this show, Scott. First of all, how are you over there? I see you're, you're, you got your woo pig stuff going on, uh, number one team in the country. I just had to start off with that. I hope we have. I hope that doesn't hurt that we have don't have rights to the uh, fight song of your number one Arkansas Razorbacks. Man, it is a great time to be a Razorback fan. Our basketball team's top ten. The fo- the baseball team's number one in the country, and the football team's not playing. So uh, that's that, those are those are three good things, you know. It's great. I've got I've got I've got my boss hog back here. I've got the hat on. I've moved upstairs for this just to just to have some fresh air man it's a great time and it's a great time to be a college baseball fan i can't wait to talk about that it's it's been a great time i've um i, I i'm a little, a little miffed the uh the last couple of, of texas road games that have been broadcast because they're not broadcast on lhn they've been broadcast on espn plus i guess using whatever camera gear they have on site and so i'm used to lots of camera ga- angles in lhn versus shooting into the dis dismal dark recesses of texas state's whatever that yeah. is they play in. but uh but tell me a little bit about why you know you and i are both lovers of the ping um it's different this year talk to me a little bit about how it's been different this year because seniors didn't have to leave and there were only five rounds of a draft last year man it has it is apps it's like walking into a nightclub full of wound up women at midnight and you're the only guy in the place i mean that that's the talent pool that sits out there right now no in all seriousness um Casey Opitz of Arkansas it was going to be a, a top 10 round, possibly a top five round uh, selection. He was a senior last year, great catcher, uh, reminiscent of a switch hitting Biggio, if you will. Um, he, he didn't get drafted in the first five rounds. So they come after him with these free agent deals. Well, he doesn't want to take that. Sure. He has the option to come back for one more year. So this guy and so many more like him have decided, I'm going to come back. I didn't get to really play last year. I'm going to come back and play again and up my stock. And you're seeing that across the board and the results we're seeing are insane. I mean, what was it that out of the top five teams in the nation, like they, they all lost to some nobody in this past weekend, yeah. LSU got beat over the series by Oral Roberts in Baton Rouge. Yeah. The first game, LSU scored seven runs. They could have tripled that number and still lost. They got beat 22 to seven. And it's because of this depth. It's yeah. because, and I really do believe, Jim, that at the end of the year, what you're going to see in college baseball is you're going to have these teams that um, are, are, you know, mid-majors, they make, make a run, they'll get in a regional, they'll scare somebody, but now they got depth. And this is where it comes back to what we're talking about in this extension. Not only do they have depth on the field, but they got deep, deep, deep bullpens. So if Johnny Strongarm starts getting a little weak in the third inning, I got somebody just as good as him in the bullpen. And that's also, also, honestly, that's why Arkansas is number one. The number one and two starters from last year are not in the rotation this year. They're coming out of the bullpen. Out of the bullpen. Wow. Yeah, you know, it's funny because I was watching Texas at UH, at UH this weekend. And one, it was sort of fun to see, um, uh, you know, guys that had been on, on, on show, a certain first baseman, last name Hernandez out of U of H. Uh, made a hell of a diving stop but but I'm watching this game and I'm listening to the UH roster and it's so many grad transfers that I think more than they've ever had and you're right it's just that there's so much talent that it's going to make for compelling baseball at all levels yeah and people forget that you know baseball teams only have like 11 plus uh, 11 and a half scholarships 11.3 whatever the 11 7 I don't remember the exact number more than 11 less than 12 Uh, that's how many scholarships they can hand out and you think about well, to get through a weekend, uh, that's 11 people right there. You yeah. have three starters, you got three pitchers, and everybody playing a position. So you have to have a lot of flexibility with the guys that you bring in. Uh, at, at academic scholarships get replaced uh, instead. So there's all this shifting of shell games and everything going on already. Well, the NCAA says, okay, we're going to allow seniors to stick around. So suddenly there's a little bit more scholarship flexibility for this year alone. And we'll talk, we can talk about what's going to happen in the future and how it's still going to stay rich because of the, the cut down well, of the draft. Well, I do but, want, let's, let's jump to that because I do want to get to that because this problem, if you want to call it a problem or this opportunity, it isn't changing because, you, to your point, 
we're working. I think it's what a ten round draft next year. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's what it looks like. No, you're exactly right. So therefore, in the past, it's been you know infinite amount. Everybody talks about Mike Piazza got drafted in what the forty third, forty seventh round, something way down there, and only as a as a favor to his dad, who had been part of the organization. Well, that's not going to be the case anymore. There's ten rounds. This is this is signi- as significant, if not more so, than when the NFL went from twelve rounds to seven. I would actually argue that it, it's more sig- it's more equatable to when the NBA cut down to two rounds. Because if you think about it, you need five basketball players on a field. To get through a full series at the major league level, you need 13. If you're going to have five starters that go the whole game, and oh, by the way, that never happens. That ain't going to happen. Yeah. Um, so I, I think it's so significant that you've only got 10 rounds of this draft, and it's about to change college baseball drastically. I don't know if people realize that. Uh, if, they're, if they haven't, they're going to catch on, and hey, this is our breaking news. College baseball is about to get a whole lot better. The minor league system that was there, all the, tr- all the single A's that they had gone away, it's going to turn into college. And I actually think in a really strange way, I hate to say this because I kind of got to give Major League Baseball credit for what they've done, but indirectly, I think they're going to increase the education level of a lot of players trying to get into the big leagues. Now, where the gap is really going to happen and where it will be um, very interesting is who gets left out from – um, uh, Latino players, Hispanic players, players coming off the Dominican islands, foreign players that don't have a natural path into college, but maybe they will because we see international players come in and play other sports in college. So uh, the educational opportunities may actually increase for baseball players, which to me uh, is a great thing because I, I personally know guys that were 18, 19 years old and had the choice to go to a, uh, to, to a school for college or get drafted in the 30 something odd round. And they chose that draft and they never got their education. Yeah. And I, and, and I think, um, you know, one of the things that bums me out about, about the shortened draft is um, I do think it means the story of that 40th round guy is gone. Of course, now it's just going to be undrafted free agent after undrafted free agent, because that's going to be where the majority, frankly, of your teams are going to come from now are undrafted free agents. It looks like, but, um, one of the things I wanted to ask before I ask about the play on the field, but this changing of the draft um, and like to your point with fewer rounds of the draft, does that mean MLB MLB teams, are they more likely to now draft a college player versus taking a flyer on a high school kid? Like, is that what, what, what you think the case will be now? A great point. And I think, I think they have to, right? You can't take those long shots because you could take – you know, the majority of the kids coming out of high school that were getting drafted are surefire things. Kids already hitting 96, 97 on a gun. He has a, a frame, but he's skinny, and we know we can add weight to him, stuff like that, right? Um, now, they're going to look at it and say, I need a little bit more proof on the field. And I think we saw that in last year's draft. There, there weren't a whole lot of high schoolers, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the ratio uh, wasn't as skewed as it has been in the past. And, and what I really think... Um, if I can see a guy do it in college and I've already seen three years of his growth and I've pretty much, I don't have rookie ball and single low a ball short and, season stuff, yeah. short season. And right. I don't have all that. Now I got to make sure that what this guy is that I'm bringing in is good. And so the two year, the year he would have spent in rookie ball, the two years he would have spent in single a and, and then started really making his progression double a upward to make it to the bigs at 24. I got three years of that already knocked out at the University of East Carolina at, you know, what, whatever school plays baseball, not Iowa State, um, which that's a different story. Why did they not have baseball at Iowa State? <laughs> that's um, a different story. <laughs> but anyway, but, um, but I, I think they're going to use those college programs as, as, as proving grounds and feeders. And, and I absolutely think it's the right way to go. And, and I'll also, you know, this comes back to coaching staffs, too there's a lot more attention going to be paid to college baseball in the coming years. So the college baseball coaches are going to have, be more in the hot seat, not just the guys that you see in the top 10, 20 programs sure. every year, you, you know, but, but these lower level guys, um, I David think it's going to turn like into to, a lot of baseball. Da- da- David, baseball Pierce like, David Pierce would like to ask you when was this has, when has his seat not been hot? Uh, well, okay. Fair, fair. To your fair, point. Uh, um, let's take a look at it real quick. You know, we've wrapped really the first, um, first couple of weeks are in the book. Mm-hmm books is is you know andy tom cheston famously says on our show you don't worry about your major league team until after uh, memorial day when do you start to worry or get excited about your team at the college level 
third of the way into the conference season, you should pretty well have an idea of where you're at. Uh, also, very often, uh, people will 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 flail away when their team loses a midseason game. You know, um, Arkansas. I think it was a couple of years ago lost to the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff or almost lost to them. And you, yeah. People were gnashing their teeth, freaking out. Uh, this was supposed to be a big game at, um, sorry, uh, we, it was supposed to be a big game. And in Little Rock, the two teams played, and UAPB threw this kid that was throwing like 64-mile-an-hour slow changes, threw the Arkansas timing off. Uh, they hadn't seen it all year. They didn't come through, and everybody's losing their mind. Well, Arkansas was saving their arms for the weekend when sure, they are playing yeah. Florida, right? Yeah. That's a little more. And, and so you yeah. get a lot of that uh, in college ball. And so if your team loses a midseason – I'm sorry, a midweek game to a lower-level opponent, don't freak out. You were using your sixth, seventh, and eighth best pitchers probably yeah. in that game because you want to save arms for the weekend. That's one thing that I would tell people. But a third of the way into the conference season, you should really have an idea of where you're at. Certain conferences are extremely strong, and bear in mind, just because your team is deep, they all are this year. Um, SEC and Big 12 are, are, are going to be uh, exciting conferences to watch for sure. Um, I mean, ACC and, and, and Pac-12 too, but the SEC is just, it's, like a, it's, it's almost like a, its own double-A league, the, the way these guys yeah. are playing right now. It's, it's freakishly good. So uh, as we wrap up then, um, you know, programming note, um, you're going to be coming down to Texas to do a couple of different segments, one of which will be your, your first game at Dish Falk. Uh, what are you looking forward to as someone who's sort of a very neutral observer to Texas OU um, in Austin? Boy, as neutral as it gets, right? I, I just, I, I'm, I'm uh, really looking forward to it. The biggest struggle I'm having right now is what do I wear? Because I, I can't really, I cannot wear burnt orange without my skin hurting. Yeah. And there's no way I'm wearing that deep red of Oklahoma either. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the field. I'm looking forward to being in a college baseball atmosphere uh, with two teams where uh, I, I care about the play on the field. I'm going to pull for Texas because I'm going to be there for you. Yes, my friends who are Arkansas fans saw that and I don't care bite me um uh it's it's over the southwest conference is over we, we we can let it go a little bit and we won the game um I'm, I'm i'm just looking forward to seeing the product on the field and and not having to watch it um online through some sketchy means you know like like what you were talking about earlier because that first weekend series man when they were playing up at globe life with texas tcu uh tech involved and then arkansas and the two other sec teams man that was whew, yeah. That was like watching a Wrigley game at 2 o'clock in the morning and half the lights are burnt out. It's awful. Well, we'll make sure uh, we get up and see, you know, the, all the busts and all that stuff. Uh, he is Scott McIntyre, the first edition of the McIntyre Mule. Uh, he'll be back pretty much weekly from now until after the winter meeting. Scott, uh, be well. I didn't well. jinx it. you next week. Absolutely, Jim. Looking forward to seeing you. Take care.